Hi guys, we take your Blueberry Hill. So here's a beginning of the floor. They were building a steel structure for the living room floor. It's going to be out of uh, W8 beams and uh, C6 channels. Basically, all welded together and then uh, welded to the uh, containers. Um, so we actually uh, made the holes uh, at the same time we did all the, the post holes for the containers. But over the last couple of months, uh, they've kind of filled up. So it was fun digging those holes out again. This one here is like four feet deep or something or other. So it took us a little while, but uh, no biggie. So even Whiskey wanted to get into the action. All we have to tell him is to dig, and he just goes kind of nuts and starts digging holes. So he was helping, kind of, maybe not. But it was funny anyway. So laser level the... Uh, the posts and stuff and then uh, we'll make them to the right height. This took a day, no big deal. I uh, used a little Ryobi junky uh, saw. Um, very simple to do these ones because there's uh, rock ledges underneath two of these posts. The center one was the one that was about four feet deep and then the uh, the other two were sitting on a rock bed. So we went down to the rock bed and now it's the end of that. We set them, of course we shoot the line, make sure they're all in straight, uh, nice and straight and then we uh, started pouring the concrete for them. So instead of using our electric uh, cement mixture, we just decided to do this, this stuff by hand. It was about uh, nine bags of concrete, eight, nine as I remember, and uh, pretty straightforward. This is the middle one. We didn't, I'm not going to show you everything, but uh, you get the idea. Pretty much through the whole uh, process, we did uh, four, four chunks of rebar and all the posts. Um, number four, I believe it was, and. Uh, no difference on these three posts, um, just shorter pieces and stuff. Anyway, here we are finishing it up. I'm gonna put the, uh, up the play with the rebar. You see that sitting on the ground right there. Same as the uh, ones we did for the containers. And then we shoot it with the laser and we're done. I'm not, uh, not sure we showed this in all the other videos, but uh, when we're doing the concrete stuff, we always vacuum the holes out, all the loose gravel and everything. Uh, we level out the, the, uh, the sauna tubes, and then we start filling it up. So now the fun stuff. The, uh, the beams are 300 and something pounds, so we actually just kind of push it with the tractor in place. Engine, I can pick up each end and move it. Um, we couldn't carry the thing. So we kind of just dragged it and made the best of it. Um, this is the first one we're putting up. The other one, uh, the other th three actually were a little bit easier. The ones that go between the containers, they were shorter, so it was a little less less weight. But the, uh, the they're 20 feet long. We, uh, we obviously used two full ones for the uh, span of the container in the center of the living room. And uh, we're using <laughs> the old, the pyramid technique. You know, you put stuff underneath a heavy object and you push it on the object. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, it worked. So a little bit of muscle, we heave the beam in place, leave it, then we stand it up in a little bit. Alright, so here you'll see me doing the uh, the beam that goes to, at the garage area, the cross beam between the containers. I have to cut it to size, and then uh, the posts have a, I have to do a little indentation on it so I can get it over the post. Um, I'll probably do that in place, but here we are, we're using the plasma cutter to cut the beam up. Works really good when you go nice and slow. Um, I surely abused this plasma cutter doing the containers, but it's an awesome tool.
So we're bringing in the big guns. That's a uh, four horsepower Dewalt grinder. It works really nice. So I got the muscle help right there, and he's holding the beam up. Okay, <laughs> sorta. Uh, we'll put it in place. I'm gonna have to trim a little bit on the left side to get over that the the post that's sitting there, and then we're gonna start welding it in and uh, jam it nice and level and uh, make it fit. So back to the plasma cutter. I'm cutting a little notch at the bottom of the beam, um, and you can see the the C channel of the container. It's kind of almost level with that. Uh, the top of the beam is, and uh, that goes right against the concrete. Um, and that's the, the main header for the living room uh, walls on that side. So as you can see, I'm, I've got the, the Argon CO2 tank and I'm going to MIG everything. Um, I've gotten pretty good at the stick welding, but when, usually when it's in a horizontal, I still can't get it 100% um, every time I do vertical. I've been practicing, but uh, I don't trust it, so I'm just using a ton of wire, making it, and everything was going really good with that. So. Smooth welds, easy, quick, and uh, got it all done with the MIG. Oh, just a quick shot of me uh, finishing up the welds. I basically do a uh, puke and go, as I call it. Uh, basically, every seam gets welded fully. Um, I try not leaving any holes for potential water or rust issues. So uh, I'm using, uh, as you can tell, quite a bit of wire, probably. So here's the beginning of the C-channel um, placement. Uh, basically each of these had to be cut custom. The containers are almost parallel. They're a couple inches off from uh, one length to the other. Um, the way it went, I guess, but it is what it is. Um, first we started using a measuring uh, tape and then uh, that got to be a pain in the butt. I had to do a little more trimming than I expected. Uh, then we switched over to my little electrical um, uh, length finder and that worked really, really well. Not sure I have a picture of me doing the measuring, but uh, we did maybe like, I don't know, 10 of these with the measuring tape, and then later on I switched to the electronic version, and that saved a ton of time. Um, you can see where I was grinding on the containers for the, you know, the welding I gotta do. Uh, it has to be clean. MIG, MIG likes clean steel, so there it is. Um, grind and go, and uh, we stuck them all together. So here's the beginning of the uh, second beam. Uh, we left it out until now, so, so we have easy access to the rest of the, the C-channels and stuff. Uh, we're putting it in place. I already did uh, see that there's a C-channel weld at the bottom of the first beam. This will just sit on top. Tons of welding here. I'll do uh, side plates and everything else. It'll be uh, nice and solid um, and uh, some serious welding, but uh, it's all fun. You bevel everything and then you uh, you know melt a lot of glue in there. I mean steel. <laughs> So I got it in place, everything's set up, now I start welding everything together, and then in a little bit you'll see me put a kind of what I call a diamond plate, but it's just a rectangle plate on the inside of the beam, fully seam welded, uh, nice nice big chunky uh, welds, and you can see uh, I left a tiny gap between this so I can fill in uh, with steel, uh, with the MIG, uh, to make a nice solid, very thick weld, um, and I've, the, I love this Miller welder it works really really well for all this stuff even the thickness of this uh, beam no problems whatsoever so here I'm gonna put on that uh, plate I was telling you about uh, it's basically a quarter inch thick wall um, plate and uh, fully welded in and that makes a much stronger joint than just doing the seam welds uh, on the beams So you see me grinding away the paint and junk on the container so we can weld the uh, C-channels in place. Again, each channel is custom length, uh, measured up and everything with the electric uh, measuring tool. And uh, then we just shove the, the uh, C-channels in place and weld them up. 
little persuasion with a hammer. Uh, you'll, you'll see me uh, use the hammer here to straighten out one of the lips on the containers. It got a few dings on them and stuff, so hammer them flat so I can actually slide the C channel in place. Um, each C channel has a small little detent in it to slip over the bottom lip on the container. Hope that makes sense. I don't know if I said that right. There it is. Tell so a closer look at what I'm doing. I'm basically welding. All the seams are welded here fully. Um, and I believe this day I ran out of another roll of welding wire, so I had to stop. But uh, anyway, I'm buying those things in uh, in two at a time now. Just uh, so if I run out of <laughs> the steel in the middle of a job, I, I have something else to fall back on. Then I'll go, go replace the one I just used up. Better idea than having just one. So here you see where the uh, the notch at the bottom of that C channel. You see where it goes into. And here I'm uh, I hadn't showed this yet, but I'm using the the cutoff wheel to actually cut the C channels. It leaves a very nice clean cut. The plasma cutter was pretty quick and easy, but uh, I didn't want to do all the cleanup. There's a little bit of cleanup with the plasma cutter. If you go too quick, if you go nice and slow, it works good too. But this leaves super nice clean cuts. I use a plasma cutter. You'll see me using it in a second here to cut the notch. Um, that goes on the bottom lip of the container C channel. So that had to be done in each one of them. And then you just slide them in place, hammer the crap out of them, and uh, weld them up. So you're going to see me wrestling with this C channel. I, uh, anytime I went near a post, um, it was harder to get it in there because you have to go over the post. And uh, they drop down just right pretty much in height with the post. So it was a bit of a struggle to uh, get them in there and jam them in there. Um, not a problem, but it just took a little more effort. And uh, I started leaning them over like that and then sliding it on the uh, the lips of the containers. That worked pretty good. But uh, for a couple of these, I had to notch the C channel to get over the post, which was not a big deal, just a little more work. And more welding. I'm now, this is almost two thirds of the way done. And then the supervisor's going to come in here and. Uh, look things over and tell me what's going on continue continue okay so skipping forward here a little bit uh, you know there's only so many C channels I can show you guys but here's the beam at the end of the uh, containers I had to notch it you see the post right there on the left at the bottom of the container so that all this stuff gets welded to the containers we're just cutting that out for a little recess um, and then we just put it in place hammer it in and weld her up So the uh, beam was easier to just put it on the pile of cut off the pieces of uh, metal, right? And it's in the air, so I can do the plasma and run around like a monkey and uh, cut. I have to cut a little bigger recess on this one because the uh, there's a, actually a square post um, on the right container which you can't see just a minute moment. But uh, anyway, a little more of a cut required. No big deal. The plasma cutter did an awesome job. Easy peasy. muscle action here we just put it in place this isn't too bad um, I can probably lift the whole thing but it's just not comfortable lifting it so I'm doing the old scooch and go and then uh, trying to move all the wires and stuff out of the way just in case I drop this thing and uh, now it's just uh, kind of a final fitment I did have to trim a little teeny bit I didn't show that on video but uh, final trim in, trim and then I uh, just welded it in so the floor is getting ready to be skinned that's in the next video by the way So 
So final fitment, use the hammer a lot, trim and go, and then I just welded it up. Anyway, that's for watching guys. Look forward to the next video. Ciao.